not gone. I hadn't gone. Alton, Alton, right? Is it Alton or Alton? What do you go by? Alton. Alton. Like altimeter? Yeah. Altitude? Altitude. Well, they call me Butch. <laughs> that really goes together. They call you what now? Butch. That's Butch. like, how do you get um, Bill out of Wisdom and how do you get Richard out of, or Dick out of Richard? Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. understand some of that. Or, stuff. or Chuck out of Charles. I know, right? <laughs> wow. Why did, you know, our, our, our language is so tough sometimes. Why do we park on driveways and drive on parkways? Oh, you've been watching too much Gallagher. Why do they why do they call them apartments when they're so close together? They're not apart at all. Where did the contract yeah, go? Why do they call it a building when it's already built? It should be a built. I mean a built. I mean I went. To, did you not have English in school? I mean if I would have said, hey, I'm going over to this built. Okay, I mean that would make sense to me. But if I'm going over to this building that's already built, you think my 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 English teacher would be slapping me on the wrist or something, right? Hey, if a if a fly had no wings, do you think they would call it a walk? <laughs> I just ponder these things sometimes. Yeah, hey, anybody know them kamikaze pilots of World War II? Remember them? Why did they wear helmets? Well, that's the slang. Why did they wear helmets? Yeah. Safety. You know how wool shrinks when it gets wet? You ladies know that, right? Wool shrink? Well, why don't sheep shrink when it rains? Huh? That's where wool comes from, right? True. Right. They do shrink. That's what I thought. Oh, they do? Oh, yeah. Uh, really? No. <laughs> they don't. They, they're fur Oh, you don't. know a lot about sheep, Mr. Murphy? I have one on me. I have you have a sheep on you? Yeah. <laughs> Does it shrink when you wash Oh? Oh! I know everybody Now... Yeah, I mean, you know, most people put their girlfriends in tattoos. Oh, I'm sorry, the sheep. Yeah, sorry, yes, you got yes. you have oh sheep tattoo. What was the sheep's name, <laughs> Mr. Murphy? What was the sheep's name, Jennifer? Jennifer? I have a question. You get a lot of. <laughs> you get a lot of. What state are you from, Mr. Murphy? You don't. Eric, what state are you from? Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> Is that where the men are in, or the sheep are nervous? Oh. Or? I think that's vice versa. <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. Um, all right. Is everybody right? Alton? Butch. Alton. Butch. Butch. I still can't get that, but okay. Butch. Butch is on. Let's go. Butch in Santiago. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Oh. Uh, it's a hot day out today, isn't it? Yeah, it feels pretty hot. Uh, it feels like a good day to take a swim. Let's go swim. I don't know. I'm not much of a great swimmer. Um, well, uh, my name is Butch. Nice to meet you, Butch. I'm Santiago. Uh, Santiago. What would you prefer to be called? Santiago. Santiago? Yes. Okay, Santiago. Uh, well, uh, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Okay. Um, Yo, are you here for the big sale? Yes, actually I am. Okay. Not bad. That's good. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. I can hey, hey, hey. imagine how he's doing. Right. Right. Hey, you do it twice and you <laughs> got yourself both done. Yeah, both times. It's just a habit. Uh, it is. It's yeah. one of the hardest break. habits to break. Okay, it's, it's one of the hardest hard habits to break. Yeah. But until, because I kept saying I'm not going to ask him that. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly but here's the good thing. When you're conscious, that you consciously know and you've agreed that you don't think it works, and you can, you'll catch yourself saying it, and eventually you won't say it. Okay? Even to this day, sometimes, very rarely, you know, I'll, I'll have a weak moment maybe, and I'll say it. But like I said, it's very hard. It takes 28 days to get a habit. It can take up to a lifetime to change it. Okay, But just remember, it doesn't work in life at all. Good job. Okay. Hey, good afternoon. Hi. How are you enjoying the day out here? Oh, it's hot. Yeah, pretty hot. Yeah. Notice you have an R on your shirt. Yeah. Uh, does it have a special meaning? Uh, no. This <laughs> 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 shuts it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Santiago. You are? Butch McLean. Butch McLean. Would you like to be called? 
But or Mr. McLean? But. But? Okay. Well, welcome to Carl Gregory. Thank you. Are you here for the big sale? Yes. Here's the one you have. <laughs> 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 you try to throw him off. Yeah. Well, we do actually have a pretty good sale uh, going on right now. Give him a hand. We were not here all day yesterday. Pretty good, right? Don't you got a degree? He's, him and his wife, or he's, he said me and him got to talk about it, but it's, it's because, like, I, remember I told a lot of people, a lot of people are going to tell you you're crazy for getting in the car business? <coughs> I don't know if that's the case yet, but we'll see. That's what my wife said. So, <laughs> okay. So, but, but um, Mr. Santiago said that we need to talk a little bit. Hopefully it's going to be a good thing, because I guarantee you, you can, I mean, you weren't even here yesterday and you missed all that, and you did very well up here, Okay. Um, one thing I will say, though, unless they ask about the sale, don't keep bringing it up. Because what we do is we plant the seed. If you saw, talk about a big sale, and that's partly because you missed yesterday. Um, if you plant a seed about are you here for the big sale, then it's almost a subliminal message. Okay, if you know what subliminals are. I went over and explained them everything there yesterday. But if you do it right, it'll be almost a subliminal message because the subconscious part of our brain is what drives everything that we do. <coughs> Okay, so if you do it exactly right, and if you do it while you're shaking your hand up and down, they're automatically going to say yes 90% of the time, and then you do not have to go on. Because the conscious part of their mind is focused on still trying to remember your name so they don't get it wrong. Okay, so you've got their conscious, and that's what a subliminal means. Sub means under, liminal means conscious threshold. So when they did, you know, in the movie theaters, when they did a subliminal message, you know, they outlawed it, you know, because they thought it was brainwashing people. Al Gore signed, got people signed petitions and got it outlawed. You know, the guy that invented the internet. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. You know, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So, so, so you know, say you're watching the movie. And I, I, this is real important. That's why I want to tell you about this. So you're watching the movie and they, they flash up, eat more popcorn. Okay. Well, you're consciously watching the movie. You don't care about something that flashes up in front of you. It's like that bug hitting the windshield. You think you're, you're focused on driving. You don't really, you don't really catch that bug that hits the windshield, right? Well, but your subconscious mind caught that and read that video. So that's why the next thing you know, in the next intermission, you're at the snack bar buying all kinds of popcorn. Okay? And you don't know why you're doing it. Because your subconscious mind drives everything you do. Okay, so we want to try to do it, and we want to use psychology, but we want to have integrity, and we want to have honorable intentions for doing so. Okay. Have yes. A question. So once you say, "Are you here for the big sale?" and let's say you have someone who remembers everything, and so you get to the point of sitting in the car, and there's really no sale, and they're like, "So what happened to the big sale?" Then what do you do? Well, first of all, we don't know, and if they ask about the big sale, that's when, that's Mr. Customer, I'm G, I'm brand new, I, because every manufacturer has different rebates, incentives, and stuff like that on cars. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I guarantee you, when, when you use the word sale and you're saying what happens afterwards, well, first of all, a customer's not going to buy a car unless they think they got a great deal, okay? Everybody that's ever bought, a, bought anything, you thought you got a great deal. Right? Or you wouldn't have bought it, right? I don't know. I bought a splash in 95. That you I was a lay down and yeah. you knew it was getting high gross? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is, true, it was it is a true pretty. thing. Natural salespeople, people that are good at, you know, great at sales, and like I said, not everybody thinks that they can be, but people that are greater sales are the people that are what we call lay downs. We're the people that get sold the easiest also. You're, you're the ones that when a Girl Scout cookie people come to the door, you're going to be buying the Girl Scout cookies. So you're going to be like, me and, me and, Allison, uh, me and Butch, we're not going to answer the door because we know we're going to open our wallet and give them all the money to it, basically. Okay? So when I buy a car, same thing. Whatever I buy, I'm there to buy. And if i got someone to treat me right and everything, I'm going to spend money. Okay? Because we get emotional. It's an emotional process buying a car just as much as it is selling a car. And I told you, I tell you, that, and, and, and you know, if you scroll back on my Facebook uh, about three weeks ago, I think it was a person, a uh, person in Wichita, Kansas, um, that uh, she sold her first car her first day at work. And I gave the same speech, okay? And then she put on the Facebook, she said, Ron, you were right. There was no feeling ever greater. She said, I can't even describe it, uh, how I felt selling my first car. Because... We're all competitive, no, no one likes to lose, right? So when you know when you, that customer comes on the lot, there's always a sale made. 
Like I said, either they sell you on the fact they're not in the market for a car, or you sell them a car. Somebody gets sold each time. So when you win, in other words, you win, okay, by you sell them a car. You've won. But here's the deal, there's no loser. Okay, it's not like when you play football and the other team you smashed them and the other team's in the other locker room, you know, and you I had some buddies or whatever. I mean, no matter what, I mean, we, we're a negative society, but we do have a heart, most of us, okay? We have consciences. People that are honest and deal with high integrity have consciences and have hearts, okay? So it makes you feel that much better when you see that you made that person and you did something great, okay? You got them a great deal in the car. They're happy. They love you. They're coming up there making sure you're eating right. They're giving you baby monkeys. Okay, I don't know, maybe everybody won't get a baby monkey, but <laughs> okay. But you catch what I'm saying? There's no feeling like it. I can't describe it. And it's every time you sell a car. It's not just like one or time or another. Now, I never had any feeling in sports or anything that can overcome the feeling of when I sell someone a car. And I get it still to this day. It's very emotional. You should see me when I get wrapped up in a car deal. I know there's going to be a car sale. I get it's like, you talking about bouncing off the walls. I mean, I get like in triple gear. You know, I mean, like 18. Yes? I have a question. I know you said, like, when you mail, you, you know, talk to customers, don't have your hands in the pockets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that a particular way that females are supposed to? Um, well, hopefully if you're wearing pants or something, you don't put your hands in your pocket. But any of your body language, and that's why I want everybody to look up on YouTube tonight, just on YouTube, not Google, but look in the search, look up body language during negotiating. Okay, and get some stuff. Because you should always be wanting to perfect your craft. You should always be wanting to make sure that you are the best at what you can be because everyone's competitive. Does anybody remember who got second place in the 100 meters or 100 butterfly in the Olympics last year or whenever it was? I think that one was actually Phelps. I think he lost one. Did he actually get second one? Tim, you better just be quiet. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Normally, we don't remember who got second place in anything, okay? All right. So, um, all right. So, but a good question, okay? So, um, the main main thing you just need to remember is just be yourself. Don't, right. there's no canned speeches, and adapt to the customer's buying mode. And when you watch some of this body language stuff, you'll understand what I'm saying, because if I'm talking to somebody that might have a different buying mode than, than, than I think they have, when I start asking certain questions to that person, I'll be able to tell by their body language but by the way that their tone of their voice is, their voice inflection, if, if they're in a negative state of mind or if I'm going the wrong avenue. Okay, for example, and I won't go too much on this because we're, 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 you know, we're going real, real slow in the class and we might have to stay a little lower. But like when a customer all of a sudden does this, you've said something wrong. You put them in a negative state of mind. They are in closed thinking mode when they do this. Okay? Someone, you know, if they're doing this on their chin or they're doing this when they're scratching their ear or whatever, then you've confused them. You've said something that's confused them. Okay? They're, every one of us were born with this talent to read body language. But have you ever seen two babies that don't, don't speak yet, but it seems like they've got their own conversation, their own world going on, right? Yeah. They know exactly what each other's talking about. I mean, they've they got that body language going on. Okay? But if we don't use it, we lose it. What we use is what we've been programmed all our life. We are creatures of our society, okay, and of each, wherever in, environment we grew up in. I'll give me an example. Kids are, I was at, I've been in locations where there's like heavy drug uses, crackheads, you know, in places to where you go and if you're at a hotel, you can't go not two feet without someone coming, hey, can you give me a dollar, can you give me five bucks, hey, I'm running out of gas, or whatever story it may be. Well, I was in um, Anaheim, California, and I stayed over in uh, over Huntington Beach area, and I guess I was in a bad area where I stayed in the hotel. This little girl, probably no more than six years old, cute little blonde, it's all dirty clothes, stuff like this, okay, come up to me, give me five dollars. I mean, just demanded me to give her five dollars. I paused, I said, look. You are going to be a doctor or a lawyer when you grow up. Don't, just because all these people around here, you see them asking people for money, demanding money out of them, that's not going to be you. You're going to make your own money. Don't listen to all these people around here. I mean, I tried doing what I could do, but, but do you see what I'm saying? We are products of our environment and our upbringing and everything. 
Okay, so that, that there was nothing wrong with that. I mean, as far as that kid's concerned, that's what that's what she should do. You know, and it just amazes me what we've got out there. And what depresses me, you know, I don't do negative, but I do, do you know, re reality, reality. But when I see so many good people, okay, and a lot of you do have jobs, but when I see so many, you wouldn't believe the people I see that have come and apply that that are unemployed. Okay. <coughs> What, and what a lot of people don't realize is that I see people that I have admired in class that don't come to class because all they're doing is trying to make their, their caseworker at unemployment office feel at ease that you went out and uh, you know, looked for a job. Okay, like I said, we get, feel, we get to where we feel like we're entitled to everything. Okay, but if you have ambition, you have goals, and you want to succeed, and you want your children to, be, to have more than you have and had, then by doing the things that I implement, whether you get the car business or not, every one of you will be a great success. Okay? I don't know everything. I've made tons of mistakes. Okay? So, and a lot of you, I mean, everyone in this room is very intelligent people. Okay? Very intelligent. Or some of you wouldn't ask some of the questions like Mike asked. Picks on me. He picks on me. Mike picks on me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. All right, let's go. Let's go next. Who's next? Let's go. Come on now.